It's time for our GMS Focus. Uh, this morning, uh, we want to revisit the thorn in Seoul-Beijing relations, the THAAD launchers. Now, Beijing has urged Seoul to uphold the former Moon administration's commitment to refrain from installing more U.S.-made anti-ballistic missile systems. Now, let's do a refresher. What are the promises made by Seoul and why it may not hold up now that we have a different leadership? For some insights, we're joined by Professor Kim Byung-ju of the Hanguk University of Foreign Studies. Good morning, Professor Kim. Good morning. Great to see you back. Thank you very much. I'm feeling much better. Uh, We have actually a lot of Korean culture enthusiasts tuning into Arirang Radio on a regular basis, and I'm sure they would remember the THAAD-induced economic sanctions that hit the Korean entertainment industry. Now, the so-called THAAD three-nose policy, it was first introduced to relieve that very economic strain on targeted industries. What was it exactly, and when and how was it introduced, Professor Kim? Yes, uh, the third saga uh, you know, un- uh, unveiled, or, or it was uh, 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 in the process of getting like uh, generating controversy and so on for several years. Actually, the overall sad history starts from around 2013 or so, and uh, until its actual installation, third system, terminal high altitude anti ballistic defense system that's designed to, uh, you know, block incoming uh, missiles at high altitude, as the name says. And that system, owned by the United States, uh, was installed by the U.S. military here in Korea uh, around 2017. So for about three, four years from 2013, when it first began to be talked about, the, the controversy went on. Uh, and as I said, that was put in place here in Korea in March, and then uh, 2017, October, about six, seven months after its installation, uh, Korea's foreign minister, Kang kyung during the annual national inspection season in October, uh, stated that Korea will uh, reject three ideas. One is additional installation of thought in addition to what had been already put in place in March, Mm -hmm. that year, 2017. So no additional installations. And then no joining of United States-led theater uh, missile defense system. Theater missile defense system means uh, the regional. Um, Maybe it covers Japan and in other areas here. Korea does not want to be part of the U.S. system. Mm -hmm. And... uh, and also, third one is Korea is not going to uh, enter military alliance with Japan, U.S., and Korea, the trilateral military alliance. Mm. Uh, no to that. So the three no's are, uh, what three no's mean, uh, the, those three points, no additional installation of thought, and then no USMD missile defense, and then no joining of the U.S.-Japan-Korea military alliance. So uh, that's what was uh, stated at that time. And so... Uh, that's the overall essence of the issue, if you will. That's right. And it dates back to fall of 2017, as you've said. Uh, years have passed. Uh, we have a different administration. So it does, I suppose, put this new leadership under a different set of circumstances, even in a different stance, as we alluded to before. Now, on that very first point you mentioned of the three no's, no additional thawed installations, what made the previous Korean government promise that? And perhaps why is it no longer sustainable under the new government? Yeah, it, that uh, uh, statement was made. We want to make it very clear here. It's, uh, it's, it, we don't want we do not call it pledge or promise to mm. uh, China. Uh, current go- Korean government's position is that it was a statement mm-hmm. and uh, mm-hmm. issuing a statement of Korean position at that time of the previous government. Okay. Then now the current Yoon government is uh, rejecting it, and that's why it has become an issue lately. But. It was being stated at that time for no additional installation for several reasons. But first of all, I think more than anything, it was domestic situation that caused it. And that's why current unit mission says it was the position of the previous government and then uh, current government is different. What I mean by domestic, there was a strong opposition, domestic opposition to the, to the initial installation of Saad. Uh, the initial installations were made in uh, Sangju, uh, Sangju area mm-hmm. in northern Gyeonggi, uh, Gyeongsang province. And that was done after several, uh, you know, controversies of seeking different 
uh, areas and so on. And so local, when finally it was decided that it was supposed to be installed in Songju area, the local people had a strong reaction to it. Uh, raising an issue about the possible problem with the, the radiation of the uh, X-band radar. X-band radar is the, the very cutting-edge advanced radar system that uh, the China was opposed to. The key reason why China was opposing SARS was because of this X-band radar. It's a, it's a very high-capacity radar. And, and the local people were um, making an allegation that this high-capacity radar causes radiation and so on. So all these rumors mm-hmm. flying around mm-hmm. and local people opposed. And then some of the, many of the uh, progressive politicians who are not necessarily pro-American and who could be viewed kind of like uh, more sympathetic towards Chinese considerations and so on, they were opposing, saying this undermines our independence and then this brings our, us too close to the United States and too far away from China and so on. So there were, there were, so much disputes, so much noise inside Korea. So right. at that time, the way I see it, Moon government had no other choice other than saying, okay, this installation is done mm-hmm. in uh, March this year, at that time, 2017, and then no more. Uh, we have all these disputes here, so there, it, it doesn't make sense if we install any more mm-hmm. uh, you know, thought systems here in Korea. And I think that was the point. Mm-hmm. But however... You know, this thought controversy caused so much disagreement inside Korea. Mm. And uh, afterwards, Korean people's feeling towards, uh, you know, the anti-Chinese feeling has right. risen and so on. And as we know, during the previous presidential campaign uh, process, Yoon government took the, the other side and right. saying, you know, enough of this about Chinese pressure and we, we will do what's necessary. If we need more thought, we're going to install it. We're going to claim our freedom to choose so. So... So that's why at this time, it's it has become an issue again. All right. As you mentioned, there are three no's. I want to actually address our listeners to a second point, not joining the U.S. missile defense system. How was this point included in the first place? And how, how has the situation changed since then? Yeah. Uh, U.S. theater missile defense system was first uh, began to be talked about uh, 20-something years ago, about 2000, 2001, mm-hmm. I suppose, during the... Uh, uh, Bush administration, and uh, at that time, uh, Kim Dae-jung government here said, uh, well, it could kind of like uh, raise too much issue towards North Korea and China. We want to, they, they didn't say it, but what they were having keep in mind, keeping in mind was kind of like a balancing between China, North Korea, and the United States, and so on. So they said, no, no, it's too premature to join uh, U.S. theater missile defense system that could, uh, cl- could draw too much of a clear line uh-huh. and then will put South Korea on the side opposite to China. That's not a good idea. So instead, what happened was instead of the uh, U.S. MD system, Korea has declared uh, that we are going to go with, we are going to build so-called a three-pillar system in response to North Korean uh, nuclear weapons. And three pillar means first kill chain, second KAMD, third KMPR. Kill chain means the system that uh, identifies and targets and destroys uh, North Korean missile when it's being prepared to be launched. Mm-hmm. So before it's pro- uh, launched, mm-hmm. we wanna we wanna destroy it. That's a kill kill chain system. KAMD is the one that shoots down the missile in air uh, mm-hmm. when it flies over here. And, and this is Korean air missile defense system, and this is an alternative to USMD system. So mm-hmm. we're saying, okay, USMD, no for now. Instead, we are building this KAMD. KAMD is part of the three-pillar system. The, the largest one of the three-pillar system is the KMPR. It's a Korea's uh, massive missiles uh, Korea's massive missile uh, uh, punishment, Korea's mm. massive punishment and, and uh, a retaliation um, system. And that's after all this happened. Uh, mm. the North Korea has to pay the price. So the, it's a decapitation uh, strategy to, to get rid of the top leadership of North Korea and so on. So Korea has been developing this three-pillar system, Kill Chain, KAMD, and KMPR. So because of that... Uh, Ever since then, uh, you know, the, the, the rejection of the idea of joining USMD system has been put in place. And Korea has been, for the last 20 years, uh, been working on KMD, building KMD system. And this, uh, this uh, you know, development of KAMD and uh, 
uh, bigger picture three pillar system has been continuing. It still continues, but however, uh, these days the new Yun government wants to be flexible about it. Why not having three pillar system together with uh, being part of or working with the USMD? Well, you know, as long as we maximize our defense capability, you know, that should serve our national interest. I think that's it. that's the uh, thinking that's uh, uh, going on at this moment. And which brings us to the third no. Um, we mentioned in the headlines, uh, South Korea, the U.S. and Japan are set to jointly conduct a ballistic missile defense exercise uh, within this week. So right. that third point, not joining the U.S.-Japan-Korea military alliance. Could you explain to our listeners the background and, of course, the change status now? Yeah, the, back in 2017, you know, 2017 was a big year for you know, for Korean politics, as we all recall. March of 2017, Park Geun-hye was uh, uh, she was pushed out of the office, right. and then uh, Moon Jae-in government came into the office in May, mm-hmm. and so 2017 was a year of turmoil. And uh, at that time, at the same time, with regard to Japan, leading up to 2017, uh, Chisomia General Security mm-hmm. of Military Information Agreement was uh, signed up in November 2016, a few months before then. Mm-hmm. And it caused huge controversy inside Korea because of the anti-Japanese feeling that we have held for quite some time. So 2017 was not the year a Korean government could uh, you know, say, yes, we will join military alliance with Japan mm-hmm. at all. It was the worst year. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that was the background. And that was the reason why Moon government at that time, 2017, said, you know, we are going to say no to U.S.-Japan-Korea alliance. So mm-hmm. altogether, as I, as I mentioned, all three points, no, insta- no additional installation, no joining of USMD, and then no to U.S.-Japan-Korea military alliance. They all had domestic political reasons, and that's why Moon government stated mm-hmm. rather than promised or pledged to the Chinese government. Okay, so it's important to take into account uh, the domestic uh, political climate at the time of which these decisions were made. Uh, Professor Kim, I I think this is probably an important fundamental question that you want to bring to our listeners, too. What makes China insist on things that go clearly against Korea's interests? Uh, Just simple power politics, or are there any points that China may be missing? The reason why why China is acting that way, in my own belief, is because they are operating based on their assumption that other countries are like their country. That's what countries do all the time. We all mm-hmm. think other countries are sort of operating the way our, uh, my own country is. Mm-hmm. And so their assumption is once they push a button, and uh, the, they, they mentioned this during the South controversy, a uh, uh, Chinese Ministry of Foreign Affairs mm-hmm. statement goes, small country has to listen to big country. Mm-hmm. And if Korea does not listen to what China once they'll have to suffer. That's their statement. And mm-hmm. so that's how they acted all together. Uh, they issued the, the anti-Korean restrictions all together, and we lost our tourism. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, as you mentioned, the K culture was banned, and, and you know Korean businesses suffered and all that. And what the reason why they, they did that was they believed that once they push a button, just like China, the other country, Korea, will have to act in the unison way. Mm -hmm. Uh, If there's a pain, and Korea will then follow China's will. I think that was their assumption. Mm -hmm. The the reason why that assumption was wrong was Korea is a pluralistic, plural democracy here. Mm -hmm. And if China acts that way, there's a public feeling that goes against it. And we saw a huge rise of anti-Chinese feeling here in Korea. And that has bound the parameter of Korean uh, government to operate. And Korean government cannot follow the so-called big countries uh, we sure demand in under our system. And that's what China got it wrong. And so as a result of it, I guess one of the big key reasons of why Yun government came in was, uh, you know, on the foreign policy side, mm-hmm. the Moon government's stance toward China was criticized and people chose uh, the other option. So mm-hmm. overall, Chinese assumption went wrong and we have clear evidence here. Uh, I just wanted to explain to our listeners in case uh, they didn't understand technical jargon, uh, plural democracy, a plural democracy usually describes a political system where there is more than one center of power, which means we're entitled to our own opinions and maybe split uh, public opinion. And that in itself, I I think you raised a really important point that, you know, countries assume that other countries operate exactly the same way as we do. Uh, Our last question of the day, what should Korea's takeaways from this current disagreement with China what what should it be? 
As we mentioned, uh, 2017, three no declaration was a statement by Korean government, uh, what Korean government wants to do, but it was not a promise or a pledge to China. But I think lesson from that is very uh, clear. Of course, Korea had appeasement in mind, you know, appeasing China at that right. time. Yeah. And uh, now we have learned a very clear lesson that appeasement policy towards authoritarian government does not work. Uh, we don't know what China did in terms of in response positively to Korea's self-constraining three no policies. There's no help on North Korean nuclear and uh, anti-Korean policies on tourism, K-culture and Korean business went on as, as, as it had been planned and so on. So there's a clear, clear evidence that appeasement to authoritarian government does not work. And especially at this time when the geopolitics is changing where authoritarian governments are gaining further prominence, power, and their status in world politics, I think it has become a clear lesson, offered as a clear lesson, how uh, Korea as a democratic, liberal democracy should mm -hmm. deal with uh, those countries that comes from the authoritarian uh, roots, if you will. Thank you so much, Professor Kim, for such an insightful conversation. Have a safe week. We'll speak to you again next week. Thank you very much. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.